this workshop have informed me because I've seen that there are certain things that you can do that would make the learners be highly motivated. We like our new teachers because we are having fun. Like, I mean, it actually increased my belief in the fact that every teacher is a reading teacher. They make sure that each and everyone is able to, to explain what he or she has learned on that day. But what we're doing here is more than school, more than education. It's something that will impact the student's life and my own life for the rest of our time in this earth. I don't think it's just for the classroom or the sake of getting a good mark in a test. It's just a lifestyle. In October 2016, Peace Corps Malawi hosted the LGL Literacy and Learning Laboratory. Designed by Read for Life, the Peace Corps Africa Literacy Initiative, the two-week workshop increased the competence and confidence of 16 staff and 17 volunteers. Participants practiced techniques for integrating literacy, gender equitable engagement strategies, and the use of local materials for learning and problem solving. Literacy is a key component to empowerment. When a child knows how to read, comprehend, and understand, she can apply knowledge to her day-to-day -day life to address the challenges being faced in her community. Based on our culture, there's this thinking that even I learned that from my mother, that um, if whatever she has to decide, she has to wait for my dad. So, and also, that is also affecting the performance of the girl child in school. They would rather prefer to hear from the boys first before they say anything. So the stereotype is you become a wife, you have to be lesser, you have to, you can't achieve much. For even to get into university, people still think that that's a guy's thing to do. We're talking about parents choosing to send boys over girls to school because they'll say, you have to stay home and you have to mop the house, you have to clean the place, when really anybody can do that. There is no special power that says, okay, you're a woman, therefore you can clean plates better. And I feel like that's the, the, the most important one, that these girls are not even able to get in the class to begin with to get the needed education. And I think the other part is a comfortable environment where they feel safe to be who they are, feel safe to speak up and voice their opinions. I feel like wherever they are, they're pondered down, somebody steps on them, their opinions, and then they just become reduced into something, and then they quit and they fall back, and they give up on their dreams and take second place. I was talking to somebody earlier, and they said that it's not only changing the mentality of the girls themselves, we have to change the mentalities of their teachers, their parents, and everybody, wherever they go, everybody's talking the same message that you need to get an education. You need to stay focused on your dreams. Wherever they go, they can't go to school and have their teachers tell them, you have to attend an education. And they go back home and their parents are telling them that, no, you're going to get married, sit down. It's confusing for them. So I feel like it's necessary that everybody understands why the girl child needs to be educated so that the message is the same and we will achieve the same goal. To get the best of any situation when there's uh, young people, there's older people, when there's girls, when there's boys, it's best to get the best out of everyone. And when there's uh, one group of people that are maybe not doing so good, then it affects the whole situation. So um, the issue of gender inequality is, just doesn't affect girls or women. It affects the whole country in terms of development, in terms of just everyday life. Uh, if, if girls or women are the weaker link, then the whole chain uh, might snap. Girls and boys start up together at the lower level in school. And as they go up, the girls keep dropping. And at the end of the day, you find out like ratio ends up being like 70 30. 30% girls and 70% boys. Then the issue of what is responsible for that, what can we do to make sure that the same way the girls start together and the boys, they continue to go together. And some of the kids in my country like grew up in that system of uh, like memorizing everything. And so the memorizer cannot say anything about what they read. They can read a whole book to you, but you ask them one question, they will not answer. If the girls are illiterate, our goal of gender empowerment will not work. Because gender empowerment works when they, the, the women, they know their rights, they know their responsibilities, and they know the opportunities that are exposed to them. But if they are illiterate, some of these things they may not be able to access or to know. The Lit Lab is designed to expose staff and volunteers to simple teaching methods that can help address the gaps in foundational literacy skills in the secondary classroom in any content area. This is also referred to as reverse engineering for STEM. 
Participants were given the most relevant bits of theory synthesized to fit common elements of learning environments in rural African contexts so that teaching methods are simple and add value to existing national curriculums. Within three days, participants were in classrooms experimenting and practicing with techniques to make content comprehensible for second language learners, constructing meaning from text, and getting students to express their ideas using text-based questions. All the while setting high expectations for participation by using gender equitable techniques for student engagement. And I like them to give chance to the student to describe their ideas, their ambitions, and uh, so many things. Because they are good in teaching, they have uh, taught us how to read well and how to be good readers. They have taught us mathematics, deep mathematics, and they have taught us what should we do when we meet the problems. After only a week of training, staff members and volunteers already learned a great deal, transforming their perspective of how literacy can be used in the classroom. Can you imagine me coming to the class only with one hand and legs? No. <laughs> okay, it's only been a week, but there's been so much learning going on in the sessions and out of the sessions. I'm teaching biology, and I was surprised that I was inspired to even write a book um, about photosynthesis and seeing it work in the classroom with the students have been really amazing. One of the things that I've enjoyed the most have been in the classroom with the students because one thing is getting all this theory from them like this is gonna work, this is gonna work and you're like mm, <laughs> maybe not but seeing it with the students being so engaged every time I read a story to them or every time I ask them these questions that make them think and struggle because I'm trying to get at critical thinking, it's just amazing to see that. I think the reading strategies have been the most powerful for me just because uh, my specialty is in mathematics and learning about um, how to use tools to help English language learners learn uh, improve their English and be able to communicate their ideas. I think that has been the most powerful for me. And I know we're busy, but I think it has been really um, meaningful to me and I think to other volunteers too. It's probably the most uh, uh, important professional development I've had in Peace Corps. 17 years old and then we write to find the mode, I have to look. So you are writing this down as I am writing it on the board. Um, I knew literacy as a broad term, but now I am understanding and realizing much more about it as a tool that is also there to be maximized to enhance girls' education. The first thing that I feel excited to take back to the office is uh, the way in which we can involve um, the whole office to support literacy, you know, to see how literacy also is working in sciences, you know, connected to other volunteers as well, you know, uh, an environment volunteer can engage with a, an involvement club to read a, a book which is enhancing the children's liter literacy at a primary school level, but at the same time fulfilling their work to make people aware of the environment. So I feel excited to be equipped to share that component and to encourage others to do that. I have learned and I'm still learning a lot, um, especially the session that we just had, I think it was on Thursday or Friday with Megan um, around how do you like try to promote gender equality across cultures um, given the fact that you have to respect, respect the culture first it is not like blaming why do people have to behave this way or you judge them but it's just like thinking alongside with them and also teasing their brain to see the importance of us being equal and seeing that if we empower women 
there's a possibility that we'll grow economically and even in terms of being intellectuals. My focus coming to this training was how to integrate literacy with, um, with Let Girls Learn because we've been doing those two things as two isolated things. Volunteers have activities that um, empower girls and try to keep girls in school and we do literacy um, which is without any gender lens. We do like a kind of agenda literacy. So how do we um, turn, that, turn, I mean, turn that around as a post and to really see where that fits. And it's a difficult thing to see because um, if you look at it, literacy really has no gender. But then when you look at it in the aspect that it is about um, empowerment in some form, girls and boys, and yeah, let's be frank, let girls learn is about empowering girls, but you can't do it without the boys. So um, I'm beginning to see how all of that ties together. And I think um, it just helps me to see better how our program can be more cohesive, because let girls learn activities have mostly been like secondary activities. but. Um, Actually, they should be, the, be like an integral part of what volunteers do day to day, which is what we've done with literacy. So um, I think coming to this workshop is helping me to see the cohesion between those two. Um, I think before I thought literacy, we, I think a lot of us think that it's just about reading, um, but it's definitely so much more. Like they talk about the four, the four things that it is, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So um, I really, I, I didn't necessarily consider it um, a practice that should be used in like the science classroom and the maths classroom but um, my perspective has changed a lot on that and just how much it's actually about critical thinking and how all this stuff can be used in all the classrooms in our daily lives. You know there's a problem back home like it is a big problem home like the issue of literacy like functional illiteracy people are able to read but they can't say what you know they read and so they're kind of learning how to break down that understanding in a critical thinking way, like take it for instance, the sentence frames. How do you frame it so that somebody reads something and they are able to say what they know about that thing? I think that's, that was a great piece of that. And so one thing we also do is like, to kind of deliberately introduce gender equitable teaching practices in the classroom, like those techniques that you use to be able to call them boys and girls equally. And so like, we emphasize Teach Like a Champion, which is a book that has all of the techniques you need as a teacher to function. So we teach our volunteers at PST to be prepared for that. That it be or the family boys will all be the one raising their hand. How do you ensure that why they should that boys are raising their hand but you are still calling out a girl who did not raise her hand and give her an opportunity to express herself? So being able to like deliberately kind of help them to kind of refine their language, help them to develop the language they need in order to express what they know. I think that's something great that I learned from here. I am strong. I am strong. I am intelligent. Some of the resources that we uh, rely on in the Lit Lab um, are tried and true uh, educational theorists have, have been working on these things for 20 years and it's been really fun and empowering to see how we can extract the, the components that make the most sense for the context we're in. Um, so simple things like borrowing from the PSYOP model, um, using key vocabulary and sentence frames and integrating a language objective into any math, science, or English lesson, um, which is something new for, for most folks at the Lit Lab, but they found it very empowering. And then seeing the way their students were able to express themselves in complete sentences um, during practice teaching was really empowering. In environments with such limited resources, um, very, very little access to text, or teaching materials. It's critical that kids have opportunities to find ways to, to use their minds to solve problems or exercise their ability to critically think or use those critical thinking skills to solve problems around them. So literacy um, is a tool for development. Um, it's the, the key to self-advocacy and self-determination when students have mastered a certain level of skill when it comes to listening, speaking, reading, writing, and critical thinking, they can make choices. They can, they can unpack what's going on in the world around them. They can be creative and using resources that are available and finding answers within. Um, and, and they have a way of advocating for themselves and standing up for themselves that might otherwise be blocked to them. 
The access point for most Peace Corps education projects is upper primary school or secondary school. At Lit Labs, Peace Corps staff and key volunteers practice literacy, critical thinking, and gender equitable engagement strategies that fortify and deepen students' ability to extract meaning from text and apply it to their lives. When you understand that literacy is about listening, speaking, reading, writing, and critical thinking, it's easy to see that it is the heart of all learning. It is more than just enrollment in school. When a student can read, comprehend, and understand, she has the tools for self-advocacy and self-determination. I'm so happy for the vis for the their visiting for us. The, these people uh, have a good skill of teaching, so that children cannot take longer time to have to get knowledge that they have brought from the teachers. When they are going back in, in their countries, we will we'll be blessed for what, for their trip. We are appreciating them. This school, so it is only our school in this year, in this year which we received like this teachers. So we make a what? what can I say? We have made a, a history. So you, sh you should come again if it may be possible. I'm happy to hear this, and this is so amazing. And it is my first day to see like this. So I'm just begging God to bless them so that they may do it to others.